and all the world may become accountable to God because by the works of the law. Now, what is the word works? It simply means points of obedience. By obedience to that law which came through Moses on Mount Sinai with flash of lightning and peal of thunder, no flesh will be justified, and notice the next words, in his sight. So we're not talking about James who was talking about show me. We're not talking about demonstrating your faith to me, man to man. He's saying no flesh will be justified in the sight of God by points of obedience to that law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. God never gave the law to save anybody. He gave the law to reveal how much we need to be saved by somebody else. Now, apart from that law, the righteousness of God has been manifest, being witnessed by the law of the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God, being justified as a what? Gift. Not something you've earned, not something you can say, hey, God, you owe me this. See, people think God owes them. Remember one lady, her daughter was a, someone suffering with polio and an iron lug, and she said, I'm not going to believe in God anymore. God didn't let my daughter have a wonderful, full life. I said, do you believe God owed your daughter a long and healthy life? That's right. Where in Scripture does God owe you anything? The only thing that he has to give you is eternal destruction in hell. That's the only thing you've ever earned. Being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. We could go on in the book of Romans and elsewhere where it repeatedly states salvation comes apart from obedience to all of those laws and commandments. It is in a matter of points of obedience. Salvation comes on the basis of grace through the work of Christ. Well, then, what is, what is Hebrews talking about? It says, he will give eternal salvation to those who obey him. Well, you see, points of obedience or things to do, that's what commandments mean. What does it mean uh, to obey? It means the things to do, things to obey. There are those things which are addressed to people while they are in an unbelieving and unrepentant state that you tell an unbeliever to do, then there are those things after salvation which you tell a repentant believer to do. So that if you take the commands found in the New Testament, you can have a chart and you can simply split the two and at the top you could say before salvation, these are the things you must do in order to be saved. Now, once you're saved, here's another list of things you must do so that the commands of the New Testament and the New Covenant, those things which Jesus encourages us and commands us to both be and do, can be divided into two, two things, two columns, what unbelievers must do and what believers must do, for example. There is no controversy over the fact that God tells unrepentant sinners to do what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God hath commanded all men to repent, Acts 17. Now, are people ever commanded to believe? Yes, they're told to believe. Well, you see, if you repent, that is obedience to a command which tells you to repent. If you believe, that's because you were told to believe. Look unto the Lord. Those who call upon, call upon the name of the Lord while he may be found. You've got to obey Christ and call upon him if you are going to be saved. And it is assumed that the person you are speaking to concerning the issue of salvation is a sinner under the wrath of God 
on his way to eternal perdition, who is unrepentant and unbelieving. They are not a child of God. They're a child of the devil, and they better repent and believe. That's why if you turn to Acts 20 and verse 21, Paul summarizes what he commanded in terms of his normative preaching as he spoke to the Ephesian elders as he went on his way to prison. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. Verse 20, for the context, I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you publicly and from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever wanted the Apostle Paul to summarize his preaching, he does it here. He's leaving. These are his parting words to the presbytery of the church at Ephesus. And he says, I am not ashamed. I preached the word. I preached it to Jews. I preached it to Greeks. And what did I preach? Repentance and faith. But you see, once you repent, you are no longer an unrepentant sinner you are now repentant. Once you believe, you're no longer an unbeliever, but you're a believer. You're no longer a sinner under the wrath of God. You're a child of God who instead of looking to God as your judge, you're now looking to God as your heavenly Father, and as a child you want to please Him. So now comes a whole list, and it's endless, it's so long, all of the things that are directed toward people who are repentant, who are believers. That's why we have verses that said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. First Thessalonians. Someone says, oh, pastor, what is, I don't know the will of God. I said, yes, you do. This is his will. Get busy getting holy and getting sanctified. Talk about such things as giving offerings and tithes, loving your wife, children being honorable to their parents, wives submitting to their husband. All of those verses, you know all the verses in the New Testament, if you took a pair of scissors and cut them out of the church epistles where he tells the Christians, now if you're a slave, do this, you're a master, do that, you're a husband, do this, you're a wife, do that, you're a child, do this, you're a father, do that, if you hit the help, it's a list. It goes on and on and on. Why? You got to do this, you got to do that. But are those things directed to unrepentant, unbelieving people or to repentant believers? Well, when he says, you are to love your husband as Christ loved the church, I doubt he would run out into the street and grab the first person he met and says, love Christ, love your wife as Christ loved the church. The guy would look and says, you're nuts. Those are exhortations given to Christians. Or, t for example, take this, attending church taking the Lord's Supper. Do you go out and say, come on, let's have the Lord's Supper, and just go out and get anybody? Or do you say, no, wait a moment. You don't sit down at the family table and eat the family meal till you're part of the family child. You don't touch this bread. You don't touch this wine till you're a child of God. They must be a repentant believer who's walking with the Lord, who has no controversy with God, who is not living in sin, or they can't touch the elements. You must, as the old Presbyterians say, fence the sacrament. Well, the same.